Hey, seventh graders, how you doing today? We are going to talk about minerals. And what we have on this worksheet today is something called the Mohs Hardness Scale. So we have a lot of different minerals listed over here. And then we have this scale, one to 10. What this is telling you is that when we have a mineral that's listed here as one, and then we have a mineral as we go up two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. What's happening on this Mohs hardness scale is that it's showing you that minerals that are listed as one are very, very weak. And then we're climbing up that scale. And as we climb up the scale, the minerals are getting harder each and every single time until we get to the very hardest mineral that we have on our scale, which is that diamond at number 10. And when we look at this, we use this diamonds or this hardness scale, the Mohs hardness scale, to help us identify minerals. It's just one of those ways of identifying minerals. We can use color and we can use a whole bunch of other tools in order to be able to identify a mineral. But this is one of those ways that we can identify a mineral is but through this hardness scale. And the way that we do that is we use items such as these over here on the right hand side to see if we can scratch our minerals because we have an idea of how hard some of these other substances are. So an example is a steel file it is a hardness of about 6.5. If we take a steel file and we scratch a mineral and it actually leaves a scratch on our mineral, that means that our mineral must be weaker than 6.5 because if it's able to be scratched, it must be sort of weenie, right? So if it's able to actually be scratched by a steel file, then I'm looking for something that's less than 6.5. So I'm looking at these one through six minerals to try to figure out what I have. And then I would have to do extra tests to figure it out. Then I look at all these other ones and I could test it with a glass, I could test it with a knife blade, I could test it with a nail, a penny, a fingernail, and see if I could narrow it down even further before I go look at other things and test other hardness scales with my mineral. If I take my mineral and I scratch it right on my mineral with that steel file, but it doesn't leave a scratch on my mineral, that means that it must be you know, pretty strong because it's not able to be scratched by a steel file. And if it's really strong, it cannot be scratched. It means it's pretty strong. It must be something that's greater than that 6.5. So that's what you're gonna be looking at today is how do I use this Mohs hardness scale to help me identify some of my minerals? And that's just one aspect of being able to identify a mineral is using this hardness scale. So let's take a look at some of the questions that you have. And then if you have additional questions, please feel free to reach any one of the science teachers. You can email us, you can contact us in class, or you can reach us on Friday during our Zoom meetings, which we have at the last 20 minutes of each class. So one to do, hopefully you can easily answer now after my discussion with you. But let's take a look at number three. So number three says you have two samples. You have orthoclase, and calcite. Which one will scratch the other? So you can take two minerals and you can actually sit there and scratch each other and you can figure out which one's the stronger one. But we can look at the Mohs hardness scale right up at the top and be able to figure out which one will scratch the other because we know how strong each one of these minerals is. So if I look at orthoclase, I can see that it's a six. And then I look at calcite and I see that it's a three. Well, which one's the bigger number? Orthoclase is a six, it's the bigger number. And a bigger number indicates that it's a stronger mineral. So big number, strong mineral, and it means the orthoclase will be able to, you know, to be able to take and scratch the calcite and it'll leave a mark on the calcite. If I try to re reverse that and take my calcite and try to scratch the orthoclase, the calcite's weenie, it's only a number three. The calcite will not leave a mark on that orthoclase. That orthoclase is much stronger and it's not gonna leave a mark of any kind. So big numbers can leave scratches on the little numbers, but not the reverse way because big numbers are stronger and they leave scratches on the weaker ones, but not the reverse, okay? So that helps us identify our minerals. It's just one way of identifying our minerals or helping us identify our minerals. 
All right, let's look at the second part of this. You guys go ahead and figure out four and five on your own. Again, reach out if you have any questions. Let's take a look at number seven. If you have mineral B, some unknown mineral B, and it says mineral B scratched the copper penny. So mineral B is able to scratch something. If you're able to scratch something, then you must be pretty strong. So you are a strong mineral if you're able to scratch something. And in this case, it's able to scratch the copper penny. So let's take a look at what it says about the copper penny up here. Well, a copper penny is 3.5. So our mineral, if we look over here, has to be stronger than 3.5 because it scratched the copper penny. So our mineral is somewhere above 3.5 because it was able to scratch the 3.5. It's a bigger number because it's a bigger number than 3.5 because 3.5 was the weenie one that got scratched. So that's the way to sort of think about it. If you're getting scratched, you're a lower number. If you're doing the scratching, you're a bigger number. You're a harder mineral. So our minerals or items that are getting scratched are always lower numbers. Now let's take a look at this other thing. We have a wire nail scratched mineral B. So now mineral B is the weaker mineral. It's the not as hard mineral. It's going to be the lower number. So we have to take a look. Where's the wire nail? So right here, I have a wire nail. And a wire nail is 4.5. So our range for this answer has to be between 3.5 and 4.5 is where our mineral has to be located. So it's somewhere between these two. These aren't the only minerals, these are just examples. So it asks in this question, identify the hardness or the range of numbers on the hardness scale. So our mineral B, if we put here our range, would have to be somewhere between 3.5 and 4.5 in terms of the hardness scale because that's exactly in what we had in terms of being able to scratch the penny, but being scratched ourselves, our mineral B was able to be scratched by mineral B. So one thing we should do is go ahead and make sure we complete that in a full sentence. So mineral B has a hardness between a range of 3.5 to 4.5. And there's your answer for seven. Okay, let's take a look at the very last one that we have here, which is number 12. And then I want you to try the remainder on your own and you can contact your teacher if you have any questions. 12 says mineral G, some unknown mineral G was scratched by a knife blade. Again, if you're getting scratched, you're a weenie. You're gonna be less than the knife blade. You're weaker, not as hard as the knife blade. So we have to go up there and look at our knife blade. Our knife blade's 5.1. So we have to be something less than 5.1. Mineral G scratched the wire nail. And now we're supposed to identify what mineral G is. So I'm gonna start this answer and just say, hey, you know what? Mineral G must be, and now let's figure it out. So it was scratched by the knife blade. So scratched at 5.1, but it was able to scratch the wire nail, which means it has to be stronger than the wire nail. It has to be greater than 4.5. So something greater than 4.5 would be this appetite. And something less than 5.1, again, would be this appetite. So the only thing that is bigger than 4.5 
and anything that's less than 5.1, do it this way. The only thing that works for both of those, and it's not going to let me highlight like I was hoping, um, the only thing that works for both of those is the appetite. So our answer for this is appetite. And I'm going to put over here just for you, you don't have to put it down, but that's because it was able to be scratched by the knife blade, so it had to be less than 5.1 because of the knife blade, but greater than 4.5 because it was able to scratch the wire nail. And that's how we were able to identify that mineral G was the appetite mineral. So I hope that helps clarify what you need to do with this. Um, take a look. Do your best on this, and again, ask questions in class if you still have questions on it, or please feel free to you know, join us on the Zoom meeting on Friday. Have a great one. Talk to you later.